Hello, lovely listener, and welcome to the debut episode of the Aardvark Swift podcast. I'm James Bowers, and I'm part of the marketing team here at Aardvark Swift. Throughout this series, we'll be chatting to game studios, initiatives, and industry professionals about all things video games, from tips on how to get into this line of work, to studio cultures and projects to get involved in. This month, we're talking to Richard Wood of Fire Sprite in Liverpool, guest hosted by Abby Dickinson. They discuss graduate recruitment drives, breaking into games, and Richard gives an insider tip about a super secret quiz. It is picking me up. Yay, that's a good start. Right. I'm going to find my questions now. <laughs> so, I'm having a sit down at Fire Sprite, chatting to Richard Wood, yep. and you are the Senior Development Manager of Fire Sprite. Yes. Correct. Right, so do you want to tell us a little bit more about what you do here? Uh, yeah, so dev management and production are kind of strange jobs and it changes day to day. I kind of describe it as I'm there to make sure the team know what they need to do and the direction from the, from the other leads and they have what they need to get it done, really. Kind of like a facilitator kind of role. I don't tell them what to make or how to make it. I'm there to kind of facilitate, make sure they've got what they need to make the best thing they can make. Just making sure it actually happens. Yes. <laughs> to, yes. <laughs> That's an excellent start for stuff. So you're generally managing teams and products, projects in general? Yes. Or do you have like a specific remit? Um, so I tend to stay on uh, one project. Often there are like side things that come up, like little uh, kind of side activities within the, within the studio, but generally I'm on, on one project and then one team. Excellent. Okay, so we know generally that there's no one way to get into the games industry. You yeah. don't go to university, get a certain degree and go in and do that path forever more, as yeah. much as that would be a great little fairy tale yeah. to tell. So um, how did you get into the games industry? Yeah, so I was kind of different. I actually did a marketing degree, um, so nothing to do with games at all. I was actually going to go into sports marketing uh, until my very last year where I was working at a game, um, a game store. And a friend of mine, uh, he was doing engineering. He got in the games industry and said I should try. So I applied to QA. I kind of went from a QA tester through to kind of production. So wasn't intending on doing games until the last six months of my four-year degree, to be honest with you. <laughs> That's quite a weird way into games, yeah. actually, working yeah. at game and ending up in the industry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Full circle. Selling yeah. games to making the games. Exactly, perfect. Maybe one day you go all the way back around and yeah, you have exactly. your own game shop. You yeah. know, it'd be a bit weird. Yeah. Um, okay, and if you weren't working at Fire Sprite or you weren't in the industry at all, what do you think you'd be doing? I think it would be marketing, to be honest with you. I think I really like product marketing, so how you like market a thing, bottle of water, coffee, whatever it is, so something to run that area here. Yeah, I've never done that. Yeah. I kind of wish I had done. I think it'd be yeah, more I think fun. It'd be interesting, yeah. It's a challenge, right? <laughs> yeah, so. I always thought it'd be quite fun to market something that's a bit evil. You know, like okay, cigarettes right. or something like yeah, that. Okay, and yeah. you where you're allowed to. I just think it'd be quite fun. Yeah. Not not a good thing. No, but no, just, it's a challenge. I yeah. genuinely would find it quite interesting. Yeah. <laughs> How long have you been at Fire Sprite? Uh, a year, actually. It was a year uh, last week. Last week? So, yeah. Did you celebrate? Internally, yes. <laughs> yeah. so, was, was there cake? <laughs> that is the best and worst thing about Fire Sprite, is there's cake every Friday, and I've definitely <laughs> seen my weight go up in the last year, and I attribute it to uh, the cakes. Yeah, specifically yeah. to the cakes at Fire It's not Sprite. my fault, uh, it's the cake's fault. Yeah. I mean, I'm taking that as a first point, yeah. to, be fair, to be honest. I wish there was more cake at my job. <laughs> no, no. I mean, yes, but also... <laughs> Okay, uh, so what is your favourite thing about working at the studio? The cake, no. Um, <laughs> I th- it's, it's a tricky one because I, I like a lot of things. I think the thing that kind of made me want to work here is that you've got these very experienced founders who've kind of done it elsewhere and have kind of came together and brought that combined knowledge to start their own studio, which to me I get to learn from that. There's not many studios, I think, that this size where you get to work with the directors on a daily basis. Um, they're part of the teams, which is super cool. So I get to speak to them, not just about the project, but the studio as well. And as long as you're meeting your, your remit in terms of what you're hired to do in the, for the project, there's a lot of freedom in the role as well. So I get to try stuff, and if it works, great. And if it doesn't, I can change and kind of move forward. So I think it's the it's a long way of saying it. I think the connection with the founders is actually really, really nice. Um, they're not locked away in a room where you don't get to see them. You can ask them questions and, and vice versa. So that's... It's very nice. No, that's excellent. So you get to kind of learn from them and get to pick their brain about stuff. Yeah, exactly. Well. Yeah. Yeah, that must be really interesting actually, because I imagine with a lot of studios, that's, you don't get that sort of yeah that sort of people you can learn from. Yeah, generally they're you know you they're in a way a different building, different room, and you don't get to see them. But I get to kind of be part of that and hear what their vision is every day, and it's a nice reminder of why you're doing certain things or certain things in a project, which is quite refreshing. I think. No, that's an excellent thing. And how big is Fire Sprite in terms of the I think we're over 100 now. Wow. Uh, yeah. So I think when I joined, it was around the 70 mark, and it's 
maybe 105 ish at the moment so it's quite a quite big yeah yeah it's getting quite big yeah yeah you forget <laughs> to be honest with you i'm at the point now where i think i know almost everyone's name but just in case i nod at everyone in the building you know whether they're a fire spread or not be nice i mean know. i don't think i know 100 names so i think yeah, it's quite true, well with yeah. that to be honest that's true yeah <laughs> In terms of the actual studio environment in general, what would you say is sort of the best things about working in there, to, like sort of benefits that you get? You get a little bit of flexibility with the extra work that you can do once you've actually mm-hmm. kind of finished what you're actually allotted to do. Is there any other parts of it that you really enjoy or do you think would benefit someone coming into the studio? Yeah, so uh, I think it depends where you're at in your career. Um, I think for me, being a senior, getting to work with the, the founders is really interesting because, they, again, they've got a lot of experience. I can kind of I can work with them to learn from them, but try and put my own ideas forward as well. There is a lot of freedom as long as you are hitting your goals uh, and making sure that your your work is done to the quality that you, you want. You can push forward new ideas, new suggestions. One thing I really like, it wasn't on my project, but another project, one of the dev managers wanted to do regular one-to-ones with the team. Kind of figure out you know, how they're feeling uh, instead of doing it you know every three or six months or a year doing it more frequently and he was allowed to do that and test it on his project and saw great results and the team really liked it and now we all do all our projects so there's scope to try stuff and if it works it becomes kind of studio wide which I think is really nice I do think we do have several projects and we can be involved in those from play testing and feedback point of view so even though I'm not on the other projects in terms of day to day I am kind of informed and I get to kind of test stuff and give feedback, which I think is super, super cool. You can see again, different team members, different experiences. So you don't know, just working on the one thing the whole time, you get to kind of see what everybody else is having. Yeah, exactly. Time. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, your day to day is on your project, but other things aren't, aren't hidden. People do want your opinion on, can you test this? And that's been something that in the last six months has definitely uh, increased is there's a lot more, can you play our, our project in the studio? Can we get your feedback on it? Um, which is always, always nice. Yeah, that's brilliant. Yeah. That kind of moves on quite nicely. What does a standard day-to-day look like for you? Do you even have a standard day-to-day uh, for no. a start? Um, <laughs> no, it, it varies. I've got certain things that I, I see I do regularly in a week. So in terms of we you know working in production, dev management, we work in sprints. And a sprint is like a body of work the team does. So generally I do planning with the team. You know, what are you doing in this two-week period? And then the team all agree to it. And then we kind of share that with the directors, the lead saying, we're doing this in this period. And then we track that through the two weeks. So the certain like milestones are always the same. But within that, it can, it can really vary. We really try and kind of help the team in any way we can. So one thing we've rolled out recently is like retrospectives. So normally you do that at the end of a project. We try and figure out what went well, what went wrong. But by then, the project's done. So we try and do it every quarter um, and the team come to us with things they want to either keep doing and want to improve upon, change a little bit. And then me and my other dev manager, our goal is within that next quarter to fix that stuff and show them things have changed. So a lot of it is taking the feedback from the team of things they want to improve upon and actually acting on it, showing we are improving what we're doing. And that can vary from, you know, they want better communication within the team or with external teams. It can be, you know, Slack channels. It can, it can really, really vary. But it's trying to yeah, constantly show the team that we're helping them improve and get what they want from the, the game and the studio as well. Yeah, and it means you can actually fix stuff before it's been shipped or sent yeah, out or exactly, finished. Yeah. It's like you're not sending there going, oh, well, next time we'll do it better. It's yeah. like kind of continuous improvement. Thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's really, really interesting. I wonder how many other studios work like that, actually. Yeah, I've, I personally never done it. I've always done the end of a project, so mm. it's the first time I've properly done it uh, throughout the project's kind of life cycle. I think the game does get better and benefit from it, but the main thing is I think it's good for the team. If they've got something they're not enjoying, if you can fix that regularly, show them that it's been fixed, I think that makes everyone happier. No, yeah, definitely. A good thing. It's going to improve the team morale if they yeah. know that they can actually get stuff fixed and don't have to wait until the end of a project. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Just kind of like grin and bear it through it. They can yeah. actually sort that problem that's brilliant so do you think that um, team morale and how the team works is really important to you Fryer Sprite yes yeah I think culture in, uh, is, is a huge thing Like we want the games to be great but we want to be a good place to work and people to be happy and have that kind of progression uh, either day to day or over the course of their career so we are constantly trying to improve that it's not something you can fix or do overnight obviously but by constantly looking at it and trying to improve I think it's uh, yeah, a big focus the, the one to ones that I mentioned just doing that you know, meeting with your team every month uh, individually and chatting to them about how they're feeling, what's happening. You can really pivot and change things very quickly based off of that. And then you get the wider team meetings that we do every quarter to really get a sense of what's worked that quarter or what hasn't worked on the project. And then you can do kind of bigger change. So it's a huge part of what we're tasked and kind of you know, trusted to do here. 
Yeah, do you think that continuous improvement is really important as yeah. well? So not just saying we're perfect, everything's great. It's yeah, exactly. Back and yeah. reassessing things. All yeah, the exactly. Time. Yeah, yeah. I think things change. Like something we do today that could be great in three months' time could could not. And you, you want to change and show that you you have growth. And certain things that we try and may not work, and that's and that's fine. You know, trying things and changing is is kind of part of what we're asked to do. But. I think it's yeah, showing that we, we are willing and we are doing stuff I think is very important for the team. Yeah, I imagine it's quite important with um, the fact that you are expanding as well and getting new people into the teams and I suppose kind of seeing how everybody works together you want to be able to sit and reassess that and yeah, talk exactly, about the yeah. changes that have happened and make sure that everybody's happy and that new people coming into the team are still yeah, happy exactly, as well. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Has working for Fire Sprite given you any sort of specific opportunities that you've really enjoyed in the last year? So did you get to go to any awesome events that you really liked? Have you given any talks? Is there stuff like coming up you think you'd be able to take advantage of? This or? awesome podcast. This awesome of podcast, of course, yeah, awesome being the, the number one pinnacle. Yeah. <laughs> um, in terms of going to events, nothing yet, I say loudly. No, uh, nothing, nothing yet, but I've said a lot already, but for me, the, the coolest part, honestly, is being able to be involved in the company as it grows. So I haven't really gone anywhere, but being there to see more size to a larger size, you can join either section. So being there as we do new processes, as we learn new things and try and improve, I think it's been uh, super interesting. I think my role and even what the company does in the last year has changed and evolved quite a lot. It's just kind of, it's cool seeing that. We've hired a lot of very talented and experienced people from other studios, as well as grads, and kind of having all those different opinions and experience come in and work together has been super, super interesting. No, it's so, really good. Yeah. yeah, so talking about grads, what's Fire Spite's sort of graduate hiring scheme? Is it still in its infancy? Do you have like a proper plan together for like how you get grads in? Like how many graduates do you have? Do you yeah. have any graduates? So, <laughs> so with grads, we have this really, really cool program that I've, I've personally never seen before, another studio. We have this team on our one of our floors that's all made of graduates. The full team from, you know, engineers to the production side to art and UI. And they're working on services and platforms um, together as a graduate group. And they've got deliveries, they've got release schedules. But they get to work together, kind of fresh from from university or college or wherever, and learn the skills before they're kind of put onto other projects with different teams and sizes. And I think that's been amazing because they've got these frequent and regular releases every few months. So they kind of go through these very quick cycles of okay, ideation, development, release, support, and then again and again. And then those kind of graduates, once they've got a bit of experience, are then kind of put onto our other kind of larger teams, kind of, again, progress through their careers from your graduate to junior to programmer and so forth. So it's just this very kind of cool team that work on these really unique projects for the studio and for others all together as graduates and they kind of progress through the studio as they kind of develop experience and confidence in themselves and kind of get to work on other, other stuff as well. No, that's incredibly interesting. So they get to come into the studio and kind of start off with smaller projects, yeah. having a look, getting a feel for how it works. Yeah. I suppose they'll have oversight from people within yeah. the teams as well. Yeah, they do. So um, we do have a, a mentor program. It's kind of new to the studio as well, but we do have people who are interested in being mentors and people who want to be mentored. And they get to work together and kind of share feedback. And we do have regular kind of uh, syncs within production. We share kind of knowledge share. But... Yeah, I think the best thing about that whole team and the whole kind of setup they have is that it's they're all coming in together, they're all working on these things, and it is that they're doing proper development, they're releasing things to the public, they're getting feedback from clients or internally, and they do get to go through the full life cycle of, of a product um, very quickly, which is super cool. No, that's excellent. So they get like those little small projects and then they go on to work on to the big ones. Yeah, later. exactly, like, yeah. So instead of chucking them in at the deep end, yeah, which, yeah. which you might get in a different studio, to be fair, it might just be go join that massive team with a lot of people of varying levels of, yeah, exactly, of yeah. expertise and just kind of learn. Yeah, well, so, so there's that, but I also think it can be hard hiring a graduate for a project that's coming out in say, six months or nine months or whatever because you don't really know what their experience is. Whereas this, we get to come in and they get to work on something and they've got you know, our company tech directors, our lead engineers can talk to them and see their progress and we can get a better idea of what they want to do. Um, is it gameplay? Is it you know, engine programming, a UI, whatever? And then from that, we can move them properly within the studio to that relevant team uh, or discipline. So we get to know them more than just an interview, you know, which I think is super cool. And even themselves, they get to know better what they want to do because uh, you don't always know when you first start on your first job. You think, I want to do this. Very true. And then two months later, you go, actually, I think this is more interesting. So by coming in and trying different stuff and getting to experience different bits and pieces, you can kind of get more confidence, I think, in the working environment as well as 
then move on to other projects, yeah. No, that's so. excellent. So they get to kind of like try out and work out exactly what, how they want yeah. to fit within a studio because there might be some really niche jobs they've never even necessarily heard of exactly, or tried, yeah. especially if they're coming straight from university because obviously they're not as tailored as they might, we might like them to be when they come in. Yeah, exactly, yeah. They might have an idea of uh, what sort of area they want to work in, but yeah. not necessarily exactly. I think because of that as well, I think we probably hire more grads than a lot of studios just because we have this graduate team you know. In terms of the graduates within the studio, what sort of things do you think they bring to the studio as a whole? So when people are coming in from university, obviously they might not have worked in the in a sort of studio before, but they've got fresh ideas and um, looking at sort of new tech, that sort of thing. Like, what do you think is the real big plus point of getting graduates into the studio? Enthusiasm, for one, is good. I think uh, if you've been doing something for, for years and years, even if you don't realise it, you can, can become almost immune to certain things or look at things in certain ways. I think when you get graduates coming in, they want to impress, they want to show that they know what they can do and, and they have, you know, desire for progression. And that can be exciting, especially if you've got a lot of you know, seniors or, or higher level experience, having that kind of freshness come in and kind of get everyone excited again can actually be really good. I think as well it's interesting because it's, it's not always the case, but sometimes that kind of naivety can be good because they think that we can do something maybe we can't do. But even just raising that can make you think of, well, what if we did do that or how could we kind of achieve that thing? So I think that kind of fresh perspective, regardless of experience, is always quite interesting. They haven't got any predisposed negativity. Yeah, about exactly. Anything. Yeah. It's like, oh, no, can't do that. Yeah, yeah, like positive, positive or negative. negative. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so they, they, they've no idea, not no idea, but they don't have that experience in certain things. Um, so coming in fresh and want to try stuff can just be quite exciting, to be honest with you. Is it fair to say Fire Squad's going to continue hiring graduates then? Yes. It's got a very good scheme in place. Yeah, yeah, so I imagine it's, it's really working. weird if you turn around and just kind of went, nah, I don't want it anymore. Yeah, <laughs> not some of my best team members um, in terms of, you know, uh, they're just loving what they're doing, they're putting a lot of output, and they're just good to be around, came from that graduate programme. So, uh, yeah, totally can see happen more and more. Have you had quite a bit of retention from people within them then? So, staying at the company a bit longer? since they come through the graduate scheme? Um, I think the company in general has good attention, so it's hard to know if it's the, the grad scheme. I think it's just that the studio in general has very good attention, yeah. Talked a little bit about the culture of Fire Sprite yep. already, but um, what would you say is the favourite part of working at the studio? The favourite part? I think I'm, I'm, I'm very lucky in that the project I work on I really enjoy and the people I work with uh, I really enjoy, and I think that's like a, a huge positive. I think if you enjoy working with people around you, that your job becomes so much better, right? Because you, you work for the people as well as the project. I mean, you might not know this, but when you're doing the hiring process, do you bring people in to have a chat with like the whole team before they like join the company to make sure yeah. you know, they would be quite a good culture fit? Yeah, so uh, not the whole team, but generally those they work around with directly. So we do like a couple of stages of interviews and generally speaking, it's never the same person in interview twice. So you get to meet you know four or five people you work with on the team. So you get the idea of the broad team you work with and they get to meet you as well, so yeah, yeah. What's that general interview process look like? It, it can vary depending on the role and based on where you are location-wise as well. If you're local, you can come in and have a chat. But yeah, generally it's a, a two-stage interview process, again, depending on the on the role. But it's kind of, it's two ways. One, we want to get to know you as an individual and your, your skill set, but it's also us trying to tell you about the studio itself, you know. As much as that person or persons are trying to sell themselves on us, we're trying to do the same thing as well. Because the worst thing that can happen is you miss sell the company and they come in thinking it's going to be X, it's actually Y. You know, you want to be very honest in those things. So I think we do a very good job with that. Oh, yeah, I'll let you know what the studio is, what we're doing, why we're doing certain things, where our future is going. And then we try and get to know a bit about you as a person as well as your, your ability. No, that's a really good way of looking at it, I think. I think a lot of people can forget in interviews, it's a lot about finding out more about the studio as yeah. well and finding out if you would be a good fit. It's not just you trying to sell yourself constantly and you yeah. sit there on the other side of a desk like some sort of game industry zard and see yeah, if they're exactly, allowed yeah. to come No, in. no, it's hundred percent two ways. And we we often we all we do always push for questions as well. We want people to, to ask us about the studio, make sure they're happy with what we told them. For any new starter coming into the company, or the studio, I should probably say, not company, that's a weird way of putting it. So for a new starter coming into the studio, what is the one bit of advice or insider tip you would give them? Sure. Uh, so well, the first thing I would say is that it's a good time to join because we've just changed our onboarding process where I think we now do a really good job of bringing people on, not just the team, but the company itself. And we have really good like check-in processes to make sure the person is happy and they know what they're doing and, and kind of progression they have within the role and within the studio. So I think that's that's really, really good. In terms of one insider tip, this is a very insider tip, um, but one of our, our dev managers does a weekly quiz 
every Friday, and it is an event. Let me tell you, <laughs> it is a bell goes off when it's going to happen. Oh, wow. it's, uh, there's teams now; it's very competitive. But things like that are a good way to meet people around you in a very kind of relaxed way. It's like a 15 minute kind of quiz, and it's it's really fun. So, yeah, I think doing things like that is a way to get yourself to meet your team but other teams as well in a kind of relaxed atmosphere are really good so Dan's quiz I'm going to say his name so he's he's happy right now Dan's quiz (laughs) Dan's quiz that's the insider tip is the insider tip that's the insider tip yeah Dan's quiz love it that's fantastic (laughs) I kind of want to join that quiz now (laughs) what do you talk about what sort of quiz questions is it just general no it's all gaming it's It's all all gaming gaming that makes sense yeah and last week was a music based one you had to say the, the name of the song and the game it was from Suck it's very hard, yeah, it did not do very well. <laughs> I would be so bad at that. I'm terrible at music quizzes in general yeah. because I'm the person who knows every single word to a song, can't tell you who sang it or yeah. anything. So, not a clue. But, but I, can, I can probably sing the entire yeah. thing. But no, it's, it's very official. There's a, a trophy. It's, a, it's done in seasons. seasons. So yeah, you get points based on how well you've done. At the end of the season, there's a winner who gets the trophy for that for that season. Is it individual or a team? Last season, individual. This season, it's team. So it'll be team-based trophy this time Oh, around. there's some awful quiz team names. I've tried to introduce team sound effects, which didn't go down very well. But I want team geese. Make a geese noise at the start. But Just honking. Yeah, it didn't, <laughs> it didn't go down very well. So. Oh, but with Untitled Goose Game doing so well, I everybody know. now gets the I honking know. reference. It, it, it so. writes itself. Exactly. Yeah. So it would have been perfect. Yeah. Oh, well. What is a favourite project you've worked on at Fire Sprite? It's not announced yet, but it is really awesome. Not just because of the project, because of the team as well. And I think the stuff we're doing is unique, I, w- I will say, without giving too much away. Awesome and unique. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> it's like we're not breaking any non-disclosures there. Yeah. It is awesome. It is unique. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> that's all you're getting out yes, of it. Yes, that's it. Cool. Yeah. That's perfect. You've covered it. In terms of the production process in general, yeah. so I know you said that you'd worked on that. So what does it look like? Just as a general overview at Fire Sprite, so you've got a project, you decide on what you're working on, sort of what's the first step? I think, again, we do it quite unique here. I think other companies do something similar, but ours is a little bit of a different take. So every project has a development manager, which is what I do and a game director and the idea is that we kind of have separate goals for the for the game the game director is what is the game is it fun it's kind of pushing that quality bar based on the vision that was set within the studio and the dev manager which is more on my side is you know do the team know what they're doing is it clear are we on the right path in terms of start and end date and, and the budget and the idea is that we do have this kind of a lot of attention because you know the game that wants to put as much as they can into the into the schedule, and I want to make sure that we release on time. But it does mean that we're not having the same hat. You know, we're not both trying to release on time and make the game fun, which can be kind of kind of difficult. So you have these kind of two roles within the within the project, and then we also have discipline leads, uh, as you expect. You know, art lead, code lead, a design lead, and then that group meet every week to talk about the direction of the project uh, and make sure that their department and their teams kind of feedback is heard as well, which is super important. So that's kind of, I guess, the general setup. And then we're adding things in and we're kind of changing things as we go and as we as we practice and, and learn what's working and what's not working. But standard, you know, daily stand-ups, we do uh, planning with the team, which is super important. None of our teams are told what to do by someone else. They kind of, they all have to commit and buy into the work they're going to achieve in that time and obviously it's checked by their lead but you never come in on a Monday and you're told you have two days to do this work and it'll take you two weeks you know that, that doesn't happen um, so we really do try and get team buy-in it's super important regular team play tests play sessions then feedback sessions which is I would say it's unique but we do it consistently which I think is quite unique so every week there's time set aside to play the game and then sit down as a team and give feedback on what happened that week and that kind of shapes the backlog and things that are coming up. One-to-ones I mentioned, and kind of the retrospective. The, the main way I describe it is we want the team to be bought into what we're making and contribute. And then you kind of got these these two pillars pushing us towards the game quality and is it fun and then you know, are we coming on time, which obviously yeah. is important for, for a game. So Very important. Yeah, I think it's a general yeah. summary. With the continued playtest as well, I suppose that helps to refocus everyone on the project and what yeah. you're actually doing so that people don't get really bogged down in sort of the minutiae that they're looking at, yeah, their yeah. one specific bit of code or their one specific design feature, and they actually get to see how it all works together as a whole. Exactly, yeah, so th- there's two things there. One, you get to see your work, which is always cool, but then, yeah, you get to see what other people are doing, and how it all ties together, and you get a better sense of why what you're doing, that minutia, is, is important to the larger scheme of things. Okay, so, my last question. What does the future look like at Firesprite? 
Amazing. Amazing. And unique. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly, I think it's a, a great time to come into the studio. Um, we are expanding. There's a lot of great roles on great projects. I think regardless of your level, graduate, senior, director, I, I don't think it matters. I think you can contribute not just to your project, but to the studio as well. I think that's something that the guys really push back on is don't just think about your project, but what can we do to improve the studio as a working environment? And I think being able to be involved in that and give your opinion and see that action upon is is amazing and unique. But I, I think it is. I think it's not something you see a lot of studios and it's uh, very fun to be involved in that. No, that's excellent. So future's bright. Yes. And amazing. And, and unique. And unique, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for listening to the Avax Swift podcast. This episode was recorded on site at Firesprite and was hosted by Abby Dickinson. This episode was produced and edited by me, James Bowers. If you have any comments or suggestions for the podcast, or if you'd like to feature on an episode, please email james.b at aswift.com. Special thanks go to Richard Wood for this episode. If you're looking to break into video games or make a transition to a new role, be sure to check out the Avax Swift website at aswift.com, where we have hundreds of industry vacancies at home and abroad. Be sure to follow us across social media for the latest news and roles, you can find us on Twitter, LinkedIn, and Facebook under our handle at AvaxWift. We also have a behind the scenes Instagram account where you can see what we get up to and what it's like to work here at Life at Aardvark. The music in this episode is from Incomputech by Kevin McLeod. To learn more, you can visit incomputech.com.